Hey everyone, it's Kota Kai. I decided to do a new updated 2023 React tutorial because I noticed about two years ago when I did this React tutorial, uh, I got a lot of good responses from it. So I want to do a new one for 2023 and I'm gonna do a little bit different this time. I'm gonna break up the videos in 10 to 20 minute increments so that I can cover a little bit more on it, uh, get a little bit more in depth on it. And I don't want the videos to run too long because I, I know that people will leave. Uh, you just wanna go in, learn the stuff you know, and just get really good at it. So so at the end of the tutorials, you should be able to program in React really, really good. And so uh, make sure you subscribe to these videos because I'm just going to crank them out as I go. And uh, give me some feedback on anything that you, you don't like, what you do like, and then I'll try to improve on it as well as I go along. But make sure you like this video too. All right, so first I just want to give a brief history about React because not a lot of people know like how this was developed, um, how it works and all that. So React right here was created by Jordan Walk and uh, he, he was a software engineer at Facebook, uh, which is meta right now. And uh, he started there since like September 2010 here, it says, and he's continuing to work on React JavaScript library that it says right there. Very smart guy, but you know, React wasn't the very first framework that Facebook was uh, working with. Uh, Jordan Walk really convinced them to use this framework because he showed them how how nicely it worked, um, how it interacts with the UI. That's the thing with React, is that it makes it better for the UI with the client side, with people interacting with it, because React only refreshes things on the page that gets updated. And so previously at Facebook and other companies back into like 2011, around that time, everyone was using like PHP or so, and with that language, uh, every time the page refreshes, it refreshes everything. And so React only refreshes the things that needs to be. And so, you know, it helped a lot on the server side. Um, it helped on the client side with the UI. It refreshed things re very nicely and it ran very smoothly. So uh, this framework was created by them, but they were working on another framework too um, with another engineering department. You know, in the end, I think they, they got together, they talked about it and they decided that React was the better framework to use. And I'm going to show you the popularity over the years right here because around this time too, there was a race to create a really good framework to use. Everyone was using jQuery and JavaScript. And so you notice right here, Angular was getting really popular in purple right here. Um, Angular in purple, Angular in, in green. And so uh, there was also Vue. And so you notice like over the years, it, it got popular, but then they all dipped. But then look at React right here. It, it just kept on climbing, 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 and then all the way up to 2023 here is just it's just way up there and so i like to see these popularity graphs to see what language is keeping up with it um not to say that angular and Vue and all that is uh is not good they are good frameworks uh it's just more people prefer react in 2023 here and going forward and it's just going to improve going forward um another thing with react was that it was developed at uh, facebook slash meta and so they didn't have to release this publicly, but you know they pushed on making this open source. And so it only made it better and better because other websites started using it. And so if you notice here, Netflix, um, a lot of different ones, OkCupid, PayPal, really big sites, you know. And uh, Postmates right here. I know Airbnb uses it, Reddit, uh, PayPal, Salesforce. So a lot of websites use React and uh, it's, and so it really showed people that this was a really good framework to work with. There were some hesitation on using React at first when they did the uh, conference, the JS conference, I believe it was, uh, back in 2012 or so. And uh, when they debuted React using JSX, um, you know, they, they didn't get a lot of people jumping on board. There were many that just didn't want to use it, but um, they kept on fighting for it. And, uh, you know, it really brought down the software engineers on this because they believed it was a really good thing and they released it on the Facebook timeline. Uh, they showed that it worked really well. And then around that time, they also acquired Instagram. And so when they took over Instagram, they implemented React on it as well. And they showed that it worked really well. And so they just eventually got, I believe it was Netflix that was first on board and then it just kind of grew and and it gave confidence in people in developers and they told them look just give it a try they didn't really force them they said give it a try and just see what you think and as people tried it out they loved it and that's what uh, helped them out 
but it took a while it took a few years and so it just kind of shows you know be open-minded with programming languages uh, what i like to do is just look overall on all of them but i do go for what's popular because i know it will stick around and so that's why i'm hanging on to react more and uh, i've been programming a lot with next.js too which is uh, just like react and so um, i just love react at this point right now and yeah that is a brief history of react so let me show you my workspace right now uh, i have a project open right here and i'm using visual studio code uh, everyone uses vs code right now i really suggest it for every beginner programmer intermediate even the pros um, it's just a really good code editor so right here you'll see that i have a react project created have it open and i'll get more into this in the very first tutorial but i'm just gonna show you how it looks right here this is the main app right here app.js so it's just like that's how the code looks like but uh, going forward i also have a lot of my um, projects in the github repository right here and if you haven't followed my channel before i put all of my programming projects in here but uh, what I'm gonna do for this new React tutorial is that since I'm breaking them up into a lot of different uh, separate pieces to help you learn, uh, I'm not going to upload the, the source code to here until the very end where I'll have a complete project and then you can view it all and I'll, I'll label it a lot better because it'll, it'll get really messy. But uh, as you follow along in the videos, you should you know get a really good handle of things and then just review the videos uh, back again if you want to you know just pick up on things another thing i want to mention is that a lot of my code from my github right here if you go back to a lot of my old node react tutorials from like a year ago or so a lot of these will be outdated um, because they're constantly making updates to node and react and so just keep that in mind as you download it i've been willing to go through this to update a lot of my code on github but the syntax uh, will be different some of them will be different and so you might get bugs and errors here and there but it's also a good learning lesson to look at the bugs and know how to fix them and so i just really recommend uh, updating your node your react uh, putting the new versions in here you know you do an npm install like that you can also if you have homebrew you do brew update and brew upgrade and so just get all the latest versions and just really understand how node works and that there are some syntax changes and you know look at your the errors in the problems and um, the output and all that and you should be able to figure it out fairly well because that's another thing with programming you do need to know how to look through bugs and figure them out and so you know don't learn things through just everything that's been given to you like you download it and just expect it to work that's not how things work in programming you need to really learn how how programming works how coding is how syntaxes are and reading the bugs uh, what i'm going to do is i'm going to jump into the next tutorial where i'm going to go over setting up react and i'm um, going over the basics showing you how it works installing it and uh, i'm going to talk about how it works uh, do a little demo and then we're just going to keep going from there and like i said give me some input on my tutorials here on what you'd like to see uh, what you'd like me to cut back on sometimes i've known to ramble on a little bit <laughs> like I'm doing right now. So let's just jump into the next tutorial. I'll see you guys there. Kodakai out. Thanks. All right, so like Tomo was saying, uh, one of the things that we strive for when, we, when we're um, building our component framework is that we want to minimize the amount of developer-facing mutations uh, that the developer is exposed to. And so React takes a different approach in a few ways. So along with React, we are shipping an embeddable XML syntax, and we're calling that JSX. And you know, at this point, we're using this all over Facebook.com. If you've ever commented on anything on Facebook or liked anything, um, if you've ever talked in chat or integrated or used your buddy list um, or even used your notifications, there's a bunch of different places where we've been using this for a really long time. And it's been working out really, really well for us. So about a year ago, when Instagram joined Facebook, uh, we had this, you know, this is the first time that this ever happened to us. We had somebody else who wasn't on Facebook's infrastructure that wanted to use Facebook's infrastructure. Uh, Rebecca made a great comment about writing your code as if it's open source. So what we started to do is we just went through all of React and all of the build steps and all of those tooling, all the tooling behind it, and we built it 
or you know, refactored it and rebuilt it such that it was able to be open sourced so that Instagram could use it on Instagram.com. In fact, Instagram.com was their first project that they wanted to take on after they joined Facebook. And in a matter of a week or two, they built all of Instagram.com profiles on this system, which was amazing for us. We were really excited about that. Learning and investing in React was the best thing I've done in my career. Seriously, it's helped me become a better web developer, land multiple jobs, and connect with so many amazing people in the community like you all. But as React has grown to be one of the most popular ways of building online today, the community, I feel, is really looking for stronger suggestions and deeper integration into the tools that they're using. There's a lot of hard parts to building user interfaces. And I like to think about React now as a collection of solutions to those problems. Um, architecture primitives for building user interfaces. So in summary, React is your blueprint of architecture primitives for building user interfaces. New React features are tools that you can incrementally adopt into your workflow. Frameworks give you an opinionated tool to build a strong foundation allowing you to scale your skyscraper to the tallest of heights. And the summary of these allows you to craft really great user experiences. I hope that you're as excited about the future of React as I am. Thank you so much.